All right, chapter nine, sequences, l'hôpital's rule. That's how you say it, by the way, or la hospital, as my students like to say. And improper intervals. No fear, no limits, no excuses. I should have saved that for the next chapter, but it'll do. But in this chapter, you'll be able to define and graph arithmetic and geometric sequences, which is not hard. Find the limit of a sequence, which is weird. How can a sequence have a limit? So one of the problems is you're gonna to have to keep in mind the difference between a limit of sequence and a limit of a series, which is much harder coming up next unit. Apply L'Hopital's rule, we already did it. And compare and use L'Hopital's rule to compare growth rates. Right, that's, that's tricky, but not the end of the world. And then the hard part, all right? Find integrals of infinite limits and infinite discontinuities. That's just weird. A lot of people freak out about it. It's, it's not that hard, it's just different. And then uh, test convergence and divergence, which is pretty straightforward um, in this unit, it's pretty straightforward. And then apply some improper integrals to real life situations, which is tricky, but we'll get there. So what's a sequence? All right, it's just a, a list of numbers. All right, so we go one comma three comma five comma seven. That's a, that's, that's a sequence. The first one is the initial term or the first term or sometimes the zero with term. Depending on how it's defined and a lot of people stress about that. Don't, it'll always be clear. If not, then you get to set it and you get to call it whatever you want, okay? What are the parts of a series? Well, let's try another one, two comma four comma eight comma 16. Uh, these are all called terms, all right? Uh, of sequence, pardon me. And what's a series? That's when we add them up. Uh, for the longest time, I could not keep them straight in my brain the difference between a sequence, uh, which one's a sequence, which one's a series. Let me just say the series is when things get serious. That's how I keep it in my brain. The sequence is really not that big deal. So any re real valued function of the domain, a subset of a set of positive numbers, positive numbers, maybe it goes to infinity, maybe it goes to hundred, maybe it stops, all right? Maybe it's the integers from one to hundred, maybe it's the integers from five to 15, you never know. Uh, that's a sequence. You get a finite or infinite, goes forever and ever. Notice it's finite, but it's not infinite. It's finite and infinite. All right, so let's just play it. Like I said, it's not hard. It's like, that's it, really? Yeah, that's it. All right, by the first six terms and the hundredth term of this sequence, the way it's defined, where a sub n is negative one to n, n squared plus one. Well, nobody said what the n is. All right, then you can assume it's one to 100. Really, we can just do that? Yeah, no problem. A to the first, plug in one, negative one over two. All right, A two, plug in numbers, one fifth. A three, plug in numbers, negative one tenth. Here's something that you might wanna keep in mind. Negative, positive, negative, that's an alternating series. A lot more on that in your somewhat near future. Now notice this is not geometric, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or arithmetic, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's just what it is. I feel like I screwed this up. Yeah, that's 37. So whenever it's an even, it's even. Now, if you can lock this down now, one, three, five, seven gives me negatives, two, four, six, eight gives me positives. Whatever I get here, I get two, five, 10, 17, 26, 37, all right? Um, this is what we call an explicitly defined series. Oh, I forgot. A of 100, that's even, so it'll be positive on top. Plug it in and do some math to get 1,000, one. That's called explicitly defined, meaning we have a sequence, and I'm really horrible about throwing the word series and sequence around. I gotta be careful, all right? but I can find any number just by plugging in. The other kind, I need the number right before it. It's called recursively, the other kind of sequence, recursively defined. 
All right, so let's check one out that's recursive. Find the first four terms, the eighth term for the sequence defined recursively by the following conditions. All right, well, again, nobody says, well, it's the first term. Why is that the zero term? Was it? Hey, it just gives it to you. Assume it's one if you got nothing else to work with. So B1 up to B4. Why is it not A anymore? Because I said it's B. What's the big deal? Four. So then take the previous term. That's what that means, term before. So they define it. Here's B1 and there's Bn. All n is greater than two. Hey, they're starting to actually give some definitions. Are these integers? Did I know that? Yeah, you can assume they're integers. All right, this is all good questions. Six, eight, ten. So there's B4, B1, two, three. All right. Uh, and the eighth term. Well, I can't just jump to the eighth term. So I've got to go 12 is 5, 14, 16, and then 5, 6, 7, 18. And then I know that's B sub 8. So there are advantages and disadvantages, of course. You have been going through school with explicitly defined. You're going to have to get used to a little recursive. Not the end of the world, just slightly different. Now, look at the two most common sequences that are out there. Already mentioned them. And I shouldn't say dominant. Uh, they're the most likely. We can do some really cool math on them. We're going to use the geometric one. So it's arithmetic and geometric. We're gonna use this like crazy in the next unit. So lock that one down. Um, and you don't even need to be super good at it. You just need to understand what it means, which is a piece of, quick, piece of cake. So sequence is arithmetic. We can be written in the form D, 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 D being added on, right? So um, notice we subtract one because the first term doesn't have that D put in there. So N minus one times D. Uh, we call D the common difference. Can we define an arithmetic sequence recursively? Yeah, piece of cake, sure. Uh, we just have to say A1 is a certain value and then An is A of N minus one, the previous value. Apologize when my A's get little tails like that. Plus the D and then we always check, check in this, assuming we are greater than or equal to two. The first one is there. So for the following two arithmetic, uh, arithmetic sequences, find D. A lot of people look at the second one and say, that can't be arithmetic. It's got logarithms in it. And we all know logarithms means, I don't know, hard math or something like that. So find the ninth term, find D, and recursive rule. All right, well, this one goes up by three each time just by looking at it. D equals three. One, two, three, four, five. I'll write about 10. 13, 16, should probably put commas in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 19. Okay, cool. So uh, they didn't say A or B here, so I'll go with A. A of nine equals 19. You can go with B, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what do we got here? Find D, the ninth term, recursive rule for the nth term. Okay, so the rules are the first term is five. If we're gonna do it recursively. And this is how we do it recursively. And then a sub n is a sub n minus one, the previous term, plus three, where n is greater than or equal to two. Massive confusion. People are like, I thought you said added up three. Where do you get this two from? This is the little subscript, meaning term one, term two, term three, term four, term five. That's what that is doing there. A lot of people don't like that. Don't like that at all. All right, well, that's recursive. How about finding an explicit rule? All right, well, this is like a slope of three. So a sub n is always going to be multiplying some three times that n. And uh, now let's just solve for the first one. Uh, this would be negative five equals this term one, three. I think if we go minus eight, we get there. Uh, you could do a slope thing, a point slope thing. You got all these options, but I mean, we can just slap it together. So this is recursive. This is explicit. And just guess and check for me. 
uh, term one, two, three, term three. Three times three is nine minus eight is one. Cool, looks good to me. Try it again. All right, so how did I do this D equals three? Subtract so ln of six minus ln of two. Hey, I'm a math guy. I know that's ln of four. Pardon me, three. Ouch. Huh, well, ln of six plus ln of three is like six times three. Is, hey, this works. Cool. D equals ln of three. A sub, now let's call it B. Let's go with B. B sub nine equals, uh, I got my calculator out, one, two, three, four, and I kept going, ln of, big number, 13, one, two, two. Where did you get that? Well, three times two is six, three times six is 18, times three, times three, times three, times three. You'll get there if you keep going. Uh, let's go with recursively. B1 equals ln of two. Bn equals b of n minus one plus l, uh, yeah, new, yes, ln of three. Confusion, yeah, what else is new? N is greater than or equal to two. By the way, we can also do b1 is this, b2 is that, and bn after that, and it's greater than or equal to three. We can do that too, that's a, a certain series, which I can't remember the name, sequence, which I can't remember the name of now, so I'll let you figure it out. B of n equals, well, that's ln of three, I'm gonna put parentheses times n. And if n is one, I get ln of six. So plus ln of three? Hmm, let me think about this one. No, this is very complicated, so. Let's just write out my answer. Now I can break this up into ln of two, which is kind of what I was getting at, plus ln of three, but then, then eh, forget it. Um, oh, I don't know why I put ln of, no, ln of three is my, uh, my D. So I could have played with it like this, but let's just leave it as is. All right, geometric sequence. Written the form like that, where it's called the common ratio. Well, how do we write things recursively? And yeah, pretty much the same. A one equals some value, and a n equals that first value, a of n, oh, the previous value, times r, as long as n is greater than or equal to two. All right, onwards. Off we go again. It's gonna be a little bit quicker this time. We're running a little long on time. R equals negative two. <coughs> Take any term and divide by the previous term. I'll call these A's. A 10th, we asked for the uh, 10th term. A10, and just by multiplying my negative two up, I get negative 512. Two, four, each even one is odd, so that's fine. A1 equals one. A sub n equals A sub n minus one, the previous term, times negative two, my ratio. But that's only when n is greater than or equal to two. And then the explicit rule is first term times the common ratio to the n minus one. How did you do that? Well, it's just geometric. I happen to know that having done this before. R equals 10, call it B this time. B sub 10 equals 10 to the seventh. One, two, three, four, five, five minus two is three, 10 minus three is seven, that makes sense. B sub one equals 10 to the negative second. B sub n equals B sub n minus one times 10. Because n is greater than or equal to two and the explicit 
B sub N. Remember, this is a pair. Just like over here, this is a pair for the definition. Equals uh, 10 negative second times 10 to the N minus one. Well, we can combine those and get 10 to the N minus three. Either way. So let's give you a little bit of algebra two math just to keep you on your toes. Second and fifth terms. Now, lots of different ways to do this. I like to think in terms of gaps. One, two, three, we're gonna go call this the first term. And then it's one, two, three gets us to there. And this is just a solving technique. Negative 48 is gonna be six times some ratio to the third. All right, it's just a solving technique. One, two, three, three gaps. Negative eight, that was weird. R to the third, R equals negative two. And now we make sure everything's copacetic. Divide by negative two, three, negative three, 10, negative two, six times negative two, negative 12 times negative two, 24 times negative two. Yep, that looks like it works. Now I get rid of this work. And I say, all right, let's go find everything I asked for. So I'm gonna find the first term, go with A's, A1 equals negative three, uh, an explicit rule for the nth term. Well, if I recall, N e AN equals negative three times the ratio to the N minus one. Didn't ask for a recursive, so I'm not giving you one. Can we graph a sequence? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Wow, I squeezed up my notes, just causing me a little confusion. Uh, let's get the calculator out and let's find one of our last calculator moment, learning moments of the year. Uh, and I'm really not good at this. Let's see what's happening. Mode, and I go down to SEQ, isn't that cool? And it gives us this weirdness. Mm. Huh. So N men start at one. Uh, U of N, that's the sequence, is uh, negative one to the N. Notice I put the N in now. Oh, it doesn't want to do it for me. Uh, let's try it again. Negative one to the n times, cool, n minus one over n. What is the first term? Uh, I don't need the first term, so I'm gonna skip that. Let's see if it lets me graph it. You can see these little dots over here, barely. Now let's see if I can get a better window. Let's go from uh, zero to 10. And yeah, there's more down here. Let's go from negative five to five. You can see them, I can do a little better than that. Let's go from negative two to two. See the dots, barely see them on the screen. Dot, 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 dot dot, 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 dot. This is gonna get closer and closer to one on the top, closer and closer to negative one on the bottom. This actually diverges because it doesn't get closer and closer to a single number, even though the top converges to one and the bottom converges to negative one. So that's it, we just graphed. So I'm not gonna get into details, but it's gonna look something like when I plug in one, I get a negative number really small, something like this, and then it just kind of bounces back and forth so it gets closer and closer to negative one and one. Add some totes out here. Something like that, all right? What about graphing a recursive sequence? Well, I just did, all right? Showed it to you. This one didn't want it that way. I wanted it explicit. 
Yeah, well, I still did it and I like it. All right, this one I did by hand originally, but I wanted to show you on the calculator first. So recursive sequence, uh, let's go to y equals. So starts at one and the min at one, u of the one is four. And then here, clear it, it's gonna be the previous term. So, wow, I don't know how to do that. No, this just means once I get up there. So I can just go with, uh, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm shocked that I am stumbling right now. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to come back to this. Set the UN as four, and then I'll write some U of n minus one. Oh, I know how to do that. It's just U. All right, so I gotta go find the U. Here, and that is thinking of this one. Oh, that was close. N minus one plus two. I sure hope I did that right. All right, let's find out what happened. Two, six. There it is. Window. One men, zero, minus ten. That's what I want. You see the dots going up here. All right. Tricky stuff. You threw me for a second. Right, but notice it does the first term and then every term after that stays that for the second term on. Huh, wow. Okay. So I graph this one. If you didn't see it, it just does. This. Switch everybody goes, oh, it's what do you got here? Uh you went up by two, two X plus four. No, it ain't. That'd be a solid line going up forever and down forever. This is a sequence that starts here and dots up. Every one. Just to make sure you're clear about the difference. It's not the end of the world, but it's, it's good to know. Finally, some calculus. Yeah, we're not really going to get into this right now. It's, yeah. So L some real number. A sequence has a limit L. So we're getting into limits as they approach infinity. Huh, and then there must be some positive number. What is going on here? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna worry about this. All right, here I am gonna say we have a limit as that approaches infinity of L if it converges to a number, All right? The same properties from back in unit two. All right, hopefully you remember that. And if you're probably confused, join the club. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's do an example. So does this sequence converge or diverge? Okay, well, let's look at this. If you ask me what's the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n minus 1 over n, it's say, I, I remember this, n to the first, n to the first. The n's dominate, so the negative 1 will become inconsequential. This is going to get out to 2 eventually. And if we graph it, we'll see that it gets closer and closer to 2. Uh, plug it in 0, you can't plug it in 1, you get one plug in two, you get four minus three, 1.5. So if you were to graph this, it would start at one, 1.5, get closer and closer to this asymptote of two. And you can throw it on your calculator if you want. All right. The other way to do this is to well, two n over n minus one over n, just two minus one over n. As n goes to infinity, this becomes zero, this becomes two. I always like looking at the powers and just going from there. So we give you a handful of these to say, do they converge or diverge? This one, if you graph it, which we have, a lot of people want to say it converges to one and negative one because it gets closer and closer to this one, closer and closer to negative one. No, it doesn't. It's bouncing. It's oscillating. This diverges. Make sure we're clear about that. All right. And this one, oh, hey, we already did that one too. Yeah, I know. It does this. 
it's not getting closer and closer to a number, it diverges. So the only one we have right now converging is this. We're gonna get into series where you're adding up terms and say, do those converge? You might think, wait a minute, you're always adding an extra value, it'll never converge. Yeah, the limit of a series that converges has to be zero, because um, you can't be adding things at the end of there. So that's gonna be something we do next unit. So this is just a taste to get you up and running. That is it. Lots for you to contemplate. Good luck.